Hi, this is Jeff at MCAM Northwest, here with a tech tip showcase of a Mastercam 2025 feature, that of the visual linking for 2D and 3D milling toolpaths. Some of you might remember the visual linking enhancements for Mastercam 2024 for whole operations, and now this feature has been extended to the rest of the milling toolpath groups. I have here on screen a part on a fourth axis fixture, and if we open up the parameters to this dynamic mill that we can currently see on screen, and go to our linking, we will see some visual planes being shown on screen. This helps give us a quick visual check as to what the settings in our linking parameters are going to. These planes will visually update depending upon what numbers we have entered in here. I'm going to change our depth value here. You'll see this red plane update when I hit enter to commit the number. You can also come out to the plane itself and click on it and drag that around on screen and snap that to where you would like the new plane to update to. If you have your generate toolpath checked on and you hit apply, you'll see that toolpath regenerate to the new plane depth. This works for all of the linking parameter settings in here. They correspond to the plane display settings on the right hand side here. They can be toggled on and off with these checkboxes. Right now you might notice that I initially had our clearance plane checked off. And if we were to look at this part, it might not be immediately obvious that something is wrong with it, but we don't have proper clearance moves for this part. I'd expect to see some lines sticking up here where the tool would initially come down to its clearance plane and then down to a retract plane before it feeds into the cut. Because this is a fourth axis part and we're programming off of center rotation, this could cause problems if we were to say program in absolute and have our clearance be one inch above our tool plane. If we were to check on our plane display settings, it becomes immediately clearer as to what's going on here. Our clearance plane is below our part inside the fixture. This just gives us another useful tool to help making our job easier when selecting appropriate linking parameters. I'm going to go ahead and click on this clearance plane. And I'm going to drag it above my part and I'm going to use the visual uh, or the ruler snapping here to just snap it to seven inches above our tool plane. If we regenerate our tool path, we now see that we have these appropriate clearance moves. This also works for mill 3D tool paths, not part of the linking parameters, but part of the steep shallow section. Steep shallow in these 3D tool paths tells Mastercam where in the Z-axis space to apply the tool path to a part. Right now we have a dynamic OptiRough, which has been regenerated, but we don't see any tool path that's been applied to our part. This can sometimes flummox people if they don't realize that their steep shallow is in a different location. Maybe they had a part in space where it was working and they moved it to a different area and it's now outside the boundaries of the steep shallow. But now in Mastercam 2025, if we come into our parameters and then go to our steep shallow section, we can now see that there are these same planes that indicate the depths of our steep shallow. Here it's quite obvious that we are trying to apply a tool path to this region inside our vice fixturing rather than our part. If we go ahead and move our steep shallows to have our minimum depth above our part and our maximum depth down at the top of our fixture, we can regenerate the tool path and see that the tool path is now generated on our part. And we're not limited to milling definitions. This feature also works for lathe definitions. Here I have a lathe part where I have a dynamic peel mill that's approaching the part radially. If we go into our linking parameters, we also see the same visual indication plane. As a lathe programmer, I find this feature to be particularly useful. I oftentimes find myself having trouble switching my brain back and forth from programming my linking parameters in radial values versus thinking of my part diametrically. Let's say, for example, that I'm going to program these linking parameters in absolute. I might realize that my part diameter is around one and a half inches, and so I would go over here in the old system and key in one and a half inches. 
and I wouldn't be really aware that anything would be wrong until I generate my tool path. Well, here I can quickly see that my top of stock is well above my part, and this would indicate to me that, oh yeah, I need to actually input a radial value. Rather than rekeying the number back in the top of stock, I'm just going to go ahead and grab our top of stock visual plane and come down to an area at the outside diameter of my part and click that as my top of stock. This works not only for radial toolpaths, but axial toolpaths. Here we have a dynamic mill that runs around the face of our part. If we go into those linking parameters, we'll also see those visual planes. If you'd like more information regarding MasterCAM 2025, please contact the MCAM Northwest sales team. Their email is sales at mcamnw.com. Phone number 503-653-5332.